Hello viewers, hope you all are doing wonderful. This is Wahida Kazi here. I'm here uh, today uh, with a new topic. The topic is about behavior change theory or model. I'm going to discuss one of the model. It's called diffusion of innovation theory. This theory is very popular and it was actually developed by E. M. Rogers in 1962, who, who was a uh, behaviorist and uh, scientist. So uh, many of my viewers must have heard about this theory and uh, must have applied in your um, uh, daily role or work. But I'm actually making this uh, video just uh, give a brief idea or summary of this theory so that my viewers who never heard about it uh, may learn uh, the basics from uh, watching this video. The name of this theory actually tell us there are two words. One part is diffusion and the second part is the innovation. By the process of diffusion, a substance can uniformly move from its high concentrated area to the low concentrated area and make a uniform solution. For uh, my viewers' understanding, I would like to explain or use an analogy of a glass of water. So suppose you have a glass of water, that glass is your uh, geographical or targeted area, okay? And the water hold in that glass, the plain water, the amount of water you have is your target population. So you want this water to change to a blue color water so what you have to do you have to invent some color that mixed well in that plain water to turn it a uniform blue water so it all depends on the the color and the ingredient in that color right to how quickly that color will mix in that uh, plain water and if the color is very, um, you know, suitable for this plain water, water, completely water soluble color, then you will immediately get um, and very quickly and easily will, you will get the solution of blue water. But if you have this color that has some ingredient that is not water soluble, although the part of the ingredients are water soluble, it will eventually mixed but the mixing required some sorts of you know mechanism you have to use a spoon to uh, mix that color uh, to the water and you probably need a little bit more um, effort um, pouring that color um, more than the the other group of water soluble color to make this water turn to a uh, complete blue water so um, Similarly, suppose this color is your new message, okay? How suitable is this um, innovation or uh, the message or the intervention for that particular targeted people uh, is the main um, subject here. <clears throat> if it is very suitable, easily adapted, and your um, <clears throat> target people are buy in, the water will turn immediately blue. It will take less effort. But if that ingredient is not 100% suitable, there are some barriers, impediment, then you have to use your some sorts of mechanism to make this color, uh, make the turn this water blue. So in this analogy, I use water as the target people, but in real life, the population are not homogeneous, okay? They are heterogeneous. So that is another barrier um, on the side, on the part of the people or the target people. One of such barrier is uh, difference among people of the heterogeneity in terms of their socio-demographic uh, factors such as income, age, uh, their need, their socioeconomic status, 
and also value, belief, and tradition. What says in the diffusion of innovation theory? The diffusion of innovation theory says the when uh, the uh, community leaders or the authorities or the scientists they want to promote a new invention, people um, do not. adopt this new invention quickly. There are five categories of people. These categories are uh, defined in this theory. The first group is called innovator. These groups are basically the people who innovate or bring that theory, new idea or the theory. So they're very well aware and they, know they are already influenced and they want to promote their um, new idea in the society. The second category is early adapters. Early adapters are also people, uh, usually they sometimes um, um, become a community leader or a leader in the healthcare system or uh, they are they already motivated. They are well aware. Sometimes they are very knowledgeable about the new idea. Sometimes they understand the need of the change and sometimes they are very uh, willing to take any kind of breaks uh, to start a new idea or new innovation. And the third group is the early um, majority. The early majority people, uh, they usually follow their leaders and they are uh, uh, the, better than the average people. They usually adopt as soon as they know that it has some benefit. Um, they don't need too much influence. They just need to know that, you know, maybe it is not harmful. It is more beneficial than harm and um, uh, little evidence or little influence uh, helps and these people usually adapt. And then the fourth category is the late adapter. Late adapters are, um, they are called also the late majority. Okay. Uh, so these are the other half of the average people. Um, some of these people are required um, more evidence. They want to see that rest of the society um, adopt this new idea or new um, technology and are um, getting benefit. There is no harm. So they are kind of doubtful, but as soon as they are, uh, they are free from the doubt, they will adopt like any other people, um, majority. The last part is the Lakers. They are kind of little bit you know lazy group and sometimes they're very tough it is difficult to move them uh, from their position and um, so um, sometimes they are not willing to change they are very difficult to change and we need to implement different kind of strategy for them for example of uh, the legal p um, legal tools or the uh, regulations or sometimes more um, evidence that might help them to adopt a new idea. These people are actually the last people who will adopt that idea, okay? Or sometimes they are very stubborn and they don't want to change. But uh, when the majority of the society uh, are getting benefit, then the authority need to make sure these people are also adopting so that sometimes they need uh, a little force or pressure by um, the law enforcement maybe. Uh, might help okay in this diagram the red colored group are the innovator and the green color group are the uh, early adapter the leader group who wants to uh, promote this idea easily and the uh, orange color group are the uh, the early majority these probably are the followers of each leader because leaders they have lots of followers and they fall in that category and then the pink color group are the late um, majority who also adopt this uh, idea after getting some evidence and some data showing uh, that data showing that these are beneficial and the last uh, blue colored group are the leggers. They are the difficult to um, adopt to a new idea. Viewers, hope you enjoyed the discussion and this is the end of my 
discussion today and I will come back with a new topic. Until then, wish you all the best and have a great time. Thank you for watching. In this picture, um, the red group are the innovators. They invented the idea, the green colored group. They are a very small percentage. They are the leaders and they also easily adopt the new idea. And these leaders have lots of followers. So the early adopters group are the followers of the leaders and uh, sometimes the average people and then the the other half, the pink group, is also the average people. They um, uh, receive the message through different media, through the communication um, and uh, from uh, the leaders and from their um, friends, families and peers. And the last group is the one, this group are the leggers. Sometimes it could be very young generation, sometimes it could be elderly people. It depends on the whether the the what kind of product or what kind of idea we are, are trying to uh, uh, bring in in the in a community of the within a target uh, community
Thank you viewers. Hope you understand my uh, discussion today. And the next uh, picture is the is a um, the bell curve. Um, if you are familiar with the bell curve, that is the normal distribution curve. Actually, these people are fall um, in the bell curve kind of uh, diagram. Um, we know that in the bell curve, the central line is the mean, which is zero. And then the other the lines beside those are the standard deviation. Yes, value is one, one standard deviation, and then two standard deviation, the second line. And um, uh, the rest of the, them is fall in the third, the, the third standard deviation, okay? So within the first standard or the, the first standard deviation, okay. Okay, the next uh, subsequent four pictures, um, it's the bell uh, curve or the normal distribution. Um, in the normal distribution, we know the central line is the mean, which is zero, and then the next line is showing the, uh, the one standard deviation. Within the one standard deviation, 68% um, of the people actually uh, falls in that category. And within the two standard deviation, is almost um, more than 95 percent 95% of the people are fall in two standard deviation and um, within the, uh, the third uh, three uh, third standard deviation that is seven 99.7% falls in that category so if you look at this picture you will and the color code you will know that uh, the 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 average the early adapters and the late adapters fall within that 68 percent within the first standard deviation uh, that means majority of the people are in that category and the the laggards fall in the 16 percent they are the uh, out of the, uh, the the first standard deviation uh, and then the, the laggards Okay, in 